so Two Trees was nice enough to send me their TS2 laser engraver, and it has some interesting things I haven't seen on other diode lasers, like automatic laser focusing, and drag chains for all of the wiring. So let's check out this laser and see if it's worth all these add-ons or not. Surprisingly, this came in three kind of large boxes, and I noticed that they're labeled A, B, and C. So let's start with box A. And right on top, there's a package of sparkly paper, along with some more materials to use with the laser. And it's actually really nice to get materials to use with the laser with the laser. And there's also the instruction manual of how to put this thing together and use it, which is pretty thick. And the rest of this box is mostly filled with the drag chain, wiring, and some of the frame. And I'm not going to drag out this video going through every box, so here's everything out. And luckily, most of it is already put together. And check out the laser head for this thing, and it has a lot going on. But I'll go over all that later in the video. The front of the frame is kind of unique. It has the control box on one side, but it also has a protective piece of acrylic on the other side. And it also came with all of this material to use with the laser, which is way more than I've gotten with any other laser. And after about half an hour, I have everything all put together. And the instructions were extremely detailed and easy to follow. And this machine is already set up to have an air assist, and its line runs through all the drag trains and everything, but it doesn't come with a pump. So you're going to have to buy one separately. And speaking about things you're going to need to buy, this doesn't come with any type of cutting surface. So as it is, if you wanted to engrave things, it'd be totally fine, but if you want to cut stuff, you're going to damage whatever is underneath. This laser head also has a little probe on it, so it can automatically focus on whatever material is underneath it. This is basically a limit switch, and it'll just lower it down, come in contact with the material, and tell the machine where it's at, and tell it to space everything out properly. But for some reason, my unit can't go all the way down, so it just kind of bottoms out on the frame, and the motor starts to stutter. So I'm going to try it again using my honeycomb cutting surface. This should make the cutting area closer to the laser head, and make everything work, in theory. And it looks like it is working properly now, but honestly, this shouldn't be a problem in the first place. So let's get some simple but boring test cuts done, just to make sure everything is working properly. And to actually control the laser, you're going to need one of two programs, which is a laser gerbil that is free and light burn that is paid. I personally use light burn for all of my lasers, so that's what I'm going to be using for this. And it looks like this cut out with no problem. But that was done without the air assist, and I'm going to use the pump that I already have. But the hose fitting on this is a little too big, but luckily the hose that's already on here fits right over the hose from this machine. And now that it has air going through the air assist, I can see if there's any difference in the cuts. And it looks like there's no smoke residue on the one that was cut out with the air assist. And the ones cut without air assist have a little bit of smoke residue on the surface. So I wanted to do a more involved cut with more lines and without air assist on. And all was going fine until the machine just kind of stopped and beeped at me. So here's what it was able to finish cutting. And you can see a lot more smoke on this. And I think the machine stopped due to a safety feature. So I turned the air assist back on to test my theory on this. And it got a little bit farther than before, but then shut off again. So this problem is due to it having a flame detector on it. So it thinks that there is a fire and turning itself off. So my last test for this, I just put a piece of tape over that sensor and everything cut out perfectly. And this one piece pop-up phone stand works fine. And here's where the sensor is, and as you can see, I had tape on it. So it might just be too sensitive, but I don't know for sure yet. And so I can finish this video and continue to use the machine. I'm going to put the tape back on. And I'll check later to see if anything else might be triggering this. But anyways, let's get back to this. I'm going to see how it does marking on a stainless steel dog tag. And this machine actually came with a few of these. And honestly, I'm not really surprised that it's able to do this with no problem, seeing that I've used other 10 watt lasers and all of them seem to be able to do this. And this will only work on stainless steel or coated metals. So kind of like these anodized cards. And all this is basically doing is either bleaching or completely burning off whatever coating is on the metal. So your image will basically be the contrast between the metal and the coating. And typically you'd use these to make custom metal business cards. But I thought this design would show it off a little bit better. So in the materials, there was some leather that looks like it's fake PVC leather, which is extremely dangerous to melt, so I'm not going to trust it. So instead, I'm going to use some leather that I know for sure is real. And it's also much thicker than the stuff that was supplied. I'm using some magnets to hold the leather down, seeing that it didn't want to lay flat. So the main reason why I don't want to just use those pieces of leather is I don't know if they're actually leather or PVC leather. And if you do laser cut or engrave on PVC leather, it makes chlorine gas, which is extremely bad for you to breathe in and bad for all electronics in the room. And I'll have a link in the description below to all the materials you should never cut and the ones you can. But anyways, it was able to cut through the real leather with no problem. 
And you can also engrave into leather as well. Just keep in mind when doing any of the engraving or cutting work, it's going to make a ton of smoke and you have some sort of ventilation. Especially with stuff like leather, it smells absolutely terrible. Mostly because you're burning flesh. So one of the last things I'm going to talk about is acrylic. And clear acrylic does not work with this laser. But you can cut and engrave on opaque acrylics. And it's kind of interesting when you do engrave on them because it makes a kind of burnt white finish on the top. And it's more of a matte finish too, so it looks really good in contrast with the shiny acrylic. And like I said, it can cut through this acrylic, but it doesn't leave the cleanest edges, not like a CO2 laser would. But you could get the job done. And you can also etch or engrave on glass or clear objects like this, just by putting a thin layer of paint over it before etching. So after all that, here's what I think about this laser. Its overall design, documentation, and build quality is really nice. And you can tell that they put some actual thought into making this. But everything obviously isn't perfect, like the flame sensor being way too sensitive. And after some testing with it later on, I found out that my LED backlight and my studio lights were the ones that were causing it to go off. And it seems to work perfectly fine under just normal room light. And the fact that it didn't come with any type of cutting surface, even just a piece of metal about the size of a piece of paper. Which honestly can be overlooked seeing that you can find something to use on your own, easy enough. But still definitely a con. What can't be forgiven though is the fact that I can't use this laser without having my piece lifted up. Seeing that the autofocus doesn't go down far enough to be used just from the machine itself. And I did look at some other reviews for this laser and none of them had this same problem. So it might just be something with my unit. It is nice that it has this red acrylic on the front for eye protection. Seeing that looking directly at the laser will damage your eyes. But if you happen to be on any other side of it, it does nothing. So the colored safety goggles are a must for anyone in the room still. And you absolutely need an exhaust system for all the fumes and smoke from this. And you can make a very simple setup with an inline fan and some ducting just going out a window. For any of these diode lasers, I really suggest getting a full enclosure for them. Seeing that it keeps everything inside the enclosure and has an exhaust on it, along with the enclosures having a clear protective sheet on them so you can see into the machine without damaging your eyes or anyone else's. But buying all these extra things for safety can really add up. And honestly, at this rate, if you don't need the full 450mm cut area, you might want to look into the TS3, seeing that it's cheaper and it's already a fully enclosed machine. But you do lose some cut area, seeing that this is only 300 by 200 millimeters. I'll have links to everything I talked about in this video in the description below. But those are just my thoughts on all of this. Let me know in the comments what you think. And I hope you found this video to be somewhat helpful at least. So, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!